Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Stalker Clear Sky. This is episode 15. Last time we left off, we had reached the Lamance Hospital, which is a uh, crawling with monolith, as well as a military helicopter that showed up for the party. There are a bunch of guys right below us, so we didn't pick the best spot to save. We're running pretty low on ammo for this uh, FN2000. Since these guys only seem to have ammo for Russian guns. So, since they're right below us, we're going to switch to our shotgun, which hasn't seen a lot of use lately. See, these guys are pretty tough. Even at close range, the shotgun won't one-shot them most of the time. Good thing is, it usually stuns them after one shot. So it doesn't really matter if it kills them right away or not. I think there should be about three more. Somewhere. Where the hell did they go? They must have gone around the other way. Because there is a staircase right there. Might be one more up there. Oh, we found a stash off one of these guys. Getting pretty close to the center of the zone now, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Which should be just past the hospital after we cut through some underground catacombs. Okay. Here's the stash, and uh, ooh, 200 armor-piercing rounds for our gun. We might be able to hang on to this after all. I guess we don't need to use three-round burst anymore since we're not fighting the helicopter. Go back to single shot. Now this place can be a little confusing to get out of. Basically can see that our objective is in this direction, and you'd think you have to go over there. However, there's no way to actually get over there. Instead, we have to cross over to the other side. Oops. We have to cross over to the other side. And then if you look to your right here, there's a hole. I'm not sure if this hole is here before the helicopter crashes, or if that sort of like knocks out the floor, but this is where we need to go. What is it with uh, video game creepy hospitals and wheelchairs on stairs? Why would you leave a wheelchair on stairs? It's not what they're designed for. Alright, we got one more of these uh, corridors to go before we can get out of this hospital. This one's pretty easy to deal with. We just have to... have to hold out for a minute though so that'll pop up any time now hold on we're out of the way okay there we go so now we just have to deal with infinitely spawning enemies for a minute Not too difficult. The armor piercing rounds on this gun are a headshot monster. Look at that, just right in the face. Gas mask won't save you. Oh, you actually survived. 
the boy who lived. What are you doing up there, silly? You fall and hurt yourself. I can't tell if that guy's dead or not. The guy up here. Well done, man. You did nope, he's not dead. And now our clear sky guys finally decide to help us out. They're like, yeah, you can handle that helicopter by yourself. But a couple monolith guys, no, we gotta help you with that. Care of that mounted gun. Apparently, our clear sky squad is just carrying a whole bunch of RPGs or something because they're just blowing this whole area up. Base, we're at the entrance to the catacombs. What now? Great. Get in position and hold the entrance to the catacombs. The main squad is on its way. Roger that. Wait a minute. We're on it. Dennis favorite. Merc, we'll hold them all in while you go down into the catacombs. Well, I guess we know who's uh, parents. Or rather, which one of their kids these parents were fond of. Ah, Dennis, you are always my favorite. Hey, that'd make a good name. Alright, so here's the catacombs. I'm just gonna save here, because the last time I did this, it crashed. And I'll see you on the other side. We've done the impossible. We fought our way into the very center of the zone, to the power plant, and mostly thanks to the Petrenko, get a scan of Strelax PDA frequency. So, without any real explanation, we're just sort of thrown up here. We just go into the catacombs, and then suddenly we're here, standing up here with a prototype Gauss rifle. This actually rips a lot from the ending of Shadow of Chernobyl, with the, uh, the teleporters, which is what these are, scattered all over. The only difference is we have this uh, Gauss rifle that does not do damage that we have to use to shoot Strelik's shield. Honestly, I really don't like this last section here. basically doing exactly what you do at the end of the first game, except you also have to do a stupid side objective of weakening Strelik's shield. And a bunch of guys have teleported in behind us, so we're just going to run for the teleporter. They don't actually know where Strelik is, so I don't know... I think that's him right there. I 
I actually can't tell which one's him. There's like a dozen people shooting at me. It's also really disappointing that there's like no mutants at the end of the game. It's just a shit ton of monolith guys. And this is true for both Shadow of Chernobyl and uh, and this one, Clear Sky. Not so much for Call of Pripyat, but you don't actually go to the power plant in Pripyat. I actually really like the ending segment from Call of Pripyat, but uh, we'll get to that someday. Again, none of these guys have guns with ammo for us. It's just really annoying that they're constantly dumping more enemies on top of you here. And you're getting shot from every goddamn direction. that, we just went from full health to empty in a second flat. Okay, I uh, may have died 20 or 30 times getting back here, but I did. And I decided we're just going to use the friggin' bell, because it does ridiculous damage and it keeps murdering the shit out of us. Also, every single one of these guys seems to want to cut this guy. So, the ammo is pretty plentiful. Now, if only they'd stop teleporting in behind us. How did that guy throw three grenades <laughs> with one throw? Did I mention I really don't like this part? Because it's constantly reminding me why. Also, this box we're standing behind is not actually bulletproof. It's just slightly more bullet resistant than we are. At least I remember to quick save. I just feel like I can deal with everything else this game throws at you. You know, there's the, the silly faction war they make you do at the beginning in the swamps. There's the dumb Gatling gun you have to run past. But this, this is just fucking ridiculous. This is the worst possible thing in any stalker game. Like, look, I'm still getting hit despite being completely behind cover. Had I properly planned ahead, I probably would have just brought a fully upgraded one of these. If we go too far forward, the guy's gonna spawn up there and start shooting me in the back. Oh, also, I did actually manage to hit Strelik when you first spawn in. As you can see, he's only got half of his shield left at the top right there. And again, died in three seconds. But by god, we're gonna do this the American Mickey's Alice way of clawing our way forward one quick save at a time. Okay, there's Strelik right there. You can tell he's got that stupid static effect around him. He completely ignores that we're shooting at him, too. Our 
I don't know why the Goth Rifle has such a long downtime between shots either. I suppose it's not actually a Goss Rifle, it's some sort of like EMP gun, but it uses the Goss Rifle skin. Ineffective against live targets. So it's completely the opposite of the actual Goss Rifle in the other two Stalker games, which is the best gun in the game. Turns out that disabling Strelok's Psy Protection did not save us at all, and it actually made it worse. And there's Strelok right there! And that leads straight into the starting of Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl, where, spoilers, you play as Strelik. And thus a new generation of Monolith was born. I'm not sure why it just spit us back into the game. Pretty sure this is not supposed to happen. Well, hey, let's take a look around while we have the opportunity. Since you can't really explore the uh, power plant very well in clear sky. But yeah, if you've played Shadow of Chernobyl, you pretty much understand exactly what happened there. Uh, we didn't really accomplish anything other than stopping the uh, zone from releasing a super deadly emission. But in return, it captured all of us, and Sea Consciousness, which is sort of the, uh, the brain behind the zone, brainwashed all of these stalkers, all of the Clear Sky stalkers, which is why there's no Clear Sky faction in Shadow of Chernobyl and Onward. much of this we can actually explore. Can we get right up on the roof here? Ah, Staircase is out. I don't think we can get anywhere interesting from here. This must, this must be a uh, Clear Sky Complete thing that lets you run around here, because normally this is, would be the credits. And as for the fate of Scar, our uh, protagonist here, there's sort of a fan theory, I guess, that he became Char... No, was it? Charon? Charon? one of the monolith leaders in Shadow of Chernobyl, who you see, mostly just because he has a uh, VSS Ventores as his main weapon, which is, you know, sort of the... It was technically 
Scar's sort of primary weapon, and it's what he has in all of the, you know, concept art and all that. It's also our busted up gun that we can retrieve at the beginning of the game, as we did. Yeah, I don't think we can really get anywhere from up here. Too bad. Uh, so I guess we'll just, uh, kind of fade to the credits. Since, you know, it feels fair to put those in there. Even if I didn't think that this was the, uh best of the Stalker series. God, they intentionally disabled all the stairs. They knew that someone might try to get back here. And that was Stalker Clear Sky. As I've mentioned kind of multiple times throughout this LP, uh, I kind of consider it the worst of the three games, which most people agree with. They tried a lot of new things, but a lot of them just didn't work out. I mean, and as you can see from this episode, I really don't like the ending. That part is just the hugest pain in the ass, and it sort of comes out of nowhere. Everywhere else is kind of manageable. But then it's like, oh, guys behind you, guys in front of you, guys teleporting in everywhere. Isn't this fun? Isn't this exciting? Not to mention, they don't give you a proper Goss rifle, which is one of the funnest things about the end of the first game. Sorry, most fun things about the end of the first game is the Gauss Rifle, which is basically a one-shot murder sniper rifle that you get to play around with right before the ending. That said, even with it being the worst Stalker game, I don't think it is a bad game, per se. I enjoyed it, most of it, even if the ending is a pain in the ass, and, uh, you know, they added some neat stuff, like the upgrade system and the ability to repair stuff, which was sorely missing from the first game. It seems really weird to add weapon deg degradation into a game and then not have any way to fix it. There was actually a glitch you could do, which involved basically equipping a bunch of artifacts until you took negative damage from the artifacts, so it actually healed you. But that was pretty silly and not at all intentional. It's sort of just abusing the game mechanics in a way that was beneficial. I think maybe story-wise as well, Clear Sky is kind of pretty weak, because it's basically the same thing as Shadow of Chernobyl. It's like, oh, you gotta you gotta attract Strelik to the center of the zone. The only difference being in Sh Shadow of Chernobyl, you actually are Strelik with amnesia, whereas here, you know, we're just some guy who got roped in, and we never even got to resolve our whole stopping the emissions from killing our nervous system sort of thing that only comes up once at the very beginning. The faction wars too are pretty fucking awful as you can tell from my misery in the uh, faction wars episodes. At the time of recording I haven't... Ac Ooh, Jennifer Hale. I wonder who she did. I Wait, Jennifer Hale? There are literally no female characters in this entire game so I have no idea who Jennifer Hale voiced. Oh, German localization. Was that a localization I missed? I wasn't actually looking at the top, I was just sort of staring at the screen. But anyhow, yeah. At the time of recording, I haven't actually done the freedom and duty faction war stuff. I'll probably put one of those up before this goes up, though, so, you know, look behind the curtain. All in all, though, I'm glad I did this game, because a lot of people played the beginning and didn't like it and didn't experience any of the uh, enjoyable stuff but I'm always of the opinion that you gotta you gotta take some of the bad